Bitcoin is going to $400,000. I'm sorry, did you just say $400,000? Just so we're clear, this isn't my prediction. No, this was Scott Minard, who is with Guggenheim Investments, which is a global investment management firm. But he went on record saying, based on his research, that Bitcoin is worth or should be worth $400,000 hundred thousand dollars and just in case you don't believe me i'll let you go ahead and hear it out of his own mouth our fundamental work shows that bitcoin uh should be worth about four hundred thousand dollars whoa now if you listen closely you can hear one of the people interviewing him almost spits out their milk whenever he says four hundred thousand dollars whoa now chances are you are wondering how in the world did he get to four hundred thousand dollars on his bitcoin valuation well we're gonna get to that and a whole lot more What's going on, y'all? Welcome back to Wealth Hacker Labs. I am your host, Jeff Rose. And Bitcoin is one of those investments that for several years, or maybe just a year or two, I completely wrote it off. Because anytime I published any video here on YouTube, I always had at least a dozen people commenting about how I need to go out and buy Bitcoin, how cryptocurrency is the way of the future. And I just got so annoyed because back then, this is about 2017, where everybody was saying that Bitcoin was going to a hundred thousand dollars. Well, it got up to, I think around 19, 20,000 and then boo, decided to plummet back down. And then all of those people vanished. Back then, I recognized that most anybody that was commenting on my YouTube channel or any YouTube channel for that matter, talking about Bitcoin, talking about cryptocurrency, most of them had zero clue how it was making money, had zero research or any data to really support the fact that it was going to $100,000. And at that point in time, this thing was all based off of FOMO. Do you know what FOMO is? It's some, it uh, stands for fear of missing out. So for a while, I wrote it off. I'm like, you know what? I'm not buying any Bitcoin. You have no idea what you are talking about. I'm going to stick to my stocks. I'm gonna to stick to my online business and focus on what I know. But then I saw the market drop. I saw Bitcoin go from almost 20,000 down to 3,000. And I thought if this is something worth considering, then now might be a time to get in. Fast forward to present day, and I'm grateful that I did get in. Now, I did not get in for a huge amount. I did not get in fully at the bottom, but I did get in for substantially lower than what Bitcoin is priced today. So for those that don't know anything about Bitcoin, let's go ahead and take a look at what Bitcoin is trading at right now and even I am shocked to see how much Bitcoin has increased for 2020 going into 2021. So at the time of this recording, Bitcoin is trading at 31,400. So we are now, it's January 4th, the time of this recording. It actually dropped a little bit. It hit a all time high of 34,000. And this was only recently after crossing the 30,000 mark for the first time. So Bitcoin had never been at 30,000. Well, we got to there January the 1st, I believe. And then boo, just skyrocketed to 34, dropped back down, down today to 31,400. So as I mentioned, I did get in, did not get in at the bottom, and I'm calling the bottom whenever it dropped down to around a $3,000, $4,000 mark, but I did get in. So for me, I opened a Coinbase account. There are a few different places that you can open a cryptocurrency account and purchase Bitcoin. But as far as one of the top ones right now, Coinbase, is by far one of the most recognized. I can do another video where I talk more about Coinbase. So here is my account value. So I am not a Bitcoin millionaire. But the funny thing about Bitcoin was I initially purchased a thousand dollars worth. I bought it. I think at that time it was around seven thousand. I planned on purchasing ten thousand dollars more. I thought that I was transferring ten thousand dollars in to purchase more Bitcoin. I actually purchased ten thousand dollars worth of Bitcoin and then transferred another ten thousand dollars 
dollars in uh, to purchase more Bitcoin. So all in, I purchased around twenty twenty one thousand dollars worth of Bitcoin. The average, I think, Bitcoin price, almost a share price. I guess you could call it share price. Uh, was somewhere around let's say five or six thousand dollars, roughly about what I paid for my Bitcoin. Uh, but twenty thousand, twenty one thousand dollars invested. I have more at this time, quadrupled my Bitcoin investment. Like that is just mind blowing. Like this is not how it's supposed to be. Uh, typically investing does not work this way. I guess unless you're buying Bitcoin or if you're buying Tesla stock, which is another you know big one over the last year or so. But you know, uh, Bitcoin is up over 300% over a year to date. I mean, it is insane. So what is one of the main factors of why Bitcoin is soaring, why it continues to skyrocket, and is there any validity in the fact that this Scott Miner is saying that it's going to be priced or valued at $400,000. First to address the validity in the valuation, you know, Scott Miner is not the only one that has a bullish look on Bitcoin. I mean, there are other people out there. Uh, here is an article read on Coindesk, and this is coming from the Bloomberg Crypto in a Monthly Report. So they say that their prediction 2021 from Bloomberg analysts say that Bitcoin could hit $50,000. Now. That is a much smaller amount than the 400,000, but still, you know, that is still a $20,000 increase from what we see today. But what are some of the main reasons why, you know, we are seeing this increase? And here's an article I came across on CNBC. First two bullet points, I feel like, you know, more mainstream acceptance. So we are seeing more people accepting the fact that Bitcoin is not a fad, is not something that is some sort of get rich scheme that just is here today and gone tomorrow. And we are seeing this because we are seeing more prominent companies either investing into Bitcoin or modifying the way that their offerings, their services to accommodate cryptocurrency and also Bitcoin. So in this article, it mentions Square, it also mentions PayPal. You know, here we have this article where, you know, Square invested $50 million into Bitcoin. This is October of 2020. And then PayPal, so they launched a new service that enabled users to buy, hold, and sell cryptocurrency on their platform. And these are not just simple things. I mean, let's, let's talk about PayPal in particular. Like this is not just a simple, oh, we're just gonna turn on a switch and offer this ability to, to be able to buy, hold, and sell cryptocurrency. This takes a lot of money, a lot of infrastructure, uh, a lot of resources to adapt your platform to be able to offer this. So that if they are investing a lot of money to be able to offer this on their platform, then they truly believe that Bitcoin is going to be something that is worth mentioning, that is worth, basically it's worth shelling out millions of dollars because they, if they recognize it, they don't, they're gonna miss out on opportunity to make a lot of money. And the other reason why I feel Bitcoin is not going away anytime soon is that you are seeing much larger institutional investors that are pumping money into Bitcoin. One in particular is JP Morgan. I'm not sure exactly how much they have shelled out investing into Bitcoin, but one of their key analysts say that $100,000 is very reasonable as a target for 2021. But they're not the only investor. You are seeing institutional investors. You're seeing mutual funds. Just recently, they announced that they are filing for an ETF to be released. That is a cryptocurrency ETF. This is something I think they tried to do a couple years ago, but then when Bitcoin, the Bitcoin price dropped, then they put it on hold. But just recently, I just read, I think it was last week, where they just filed again to release a cryptocurrency ETF, you know, and once you're making an ETF out of cryptocurrency, then you definitely know it's not going away. Now, I'm not the only one that has changed my tune on Bitcoin. And I'm also probably not the only one that is not regretting that I didn't buy more. I'm grateful that I bought what I did, but man, I, I, maybe I should have bought a little bit more. But I uh, came across this blog post and this comes from Nick Majuli. He is the chief operating officer for Ritzhold Wealth Management. 
and he just published this today, actually I came across this on Twitter, about his thoughts on Bitcoin. And one of the things for him that he said, which changed his tune, was when he looked at what a lot of the bold predictors, the people just fell in love with Bitcoin and just said, you know, this is the, the greatest thing you're gonna miss out if you don't invest money into it. So they said, you know, for example, Bitcoin bulls have claimed that Bitcoin uh, would be used as a currency and that the US dollar would plummet in value. Both of those have not happened yet, but still the price of Bitcoin has continued to rise. Uh, the other thing that he mentions, the Bitcoin halving in May of 2020 would increase Bitcoin's price. I'm not gonna go into exactly what Bitcoin, the, the halving is, but basically what the Bitcoin bulls were saying was that once this event happened, which it did in May of 2020, once that happened, that the price of Bitcoin would skyrocket. Well, it didn't back then. It is now, uh, but it didn't back then. And uh, Nick goes on also to say, you know, why it's increasing is really is because the increased adoption and the ability uh, that many Bitcoin owners have to hold even as prices rose dramatically. And I think the other reason too is just that it's just ease of access. You know, you have so many different platforms now that you can purchase Bitcoin. Yes, I bought it through Coinbase, but I could have used Robinhood. I could have used BlockFi. I could have used, there's some other, and I think Webbull also has the ability to buy cryptocurrency. If I'm wrong on that, my bad. But I just know that there are tons of platforms now that make it so much easy. So you can use your smartphone, iPhone, whatever you got, purchase Bitcoin through your phone. Like that's how easy it is. Now I mentioned at the beginning of this video that Scott Minard had his belief or his rationale of why Bitcoin could be or should be valued at $400,000. Well, this is what he had to say as the reason why. It's based on the scarcity and relative valuation, such as things like gold uh, as a percentage of uh, GDP. Bitcoin is actually has a lot of the attributes of gold and at the same time has an unusual yeah. uh, value in terms of transaction. Now, one of the key things that Scott mentions is the scarcity of Bitcoin. And this is one of the things that it's really hard for people to understand exactly what that means. But I watched this video on YouTube, of course, by the Wall Street Journal that gave a really good explanation of what scarcity means with Bitcoin. So check out this clip these coins aren't limitless. Bitcoin's founding code was embedded with the condition that there would always be a finite number of coins available. This scarcity is what gives Bitcoin value. Right now, about 18.5 million of the 21 million maximum Bitcoins have already been mined. In addition to scarcity, Scott also talks about Bitcoin's valuation in relation to gold as a percentage of GDP. And I think, cause right now, uh, there are definitely a lot of people that are saying that Bitcoin is the new gold. You have to realize that the total market cap of Bitcoin is small, is extremely small compared to the market cap of gold. Just to kind of give you an idea, right now, Bitcoin's market cap is 575 billion. And I don't know if this is a, as of today's price, but it would have to surge to $146,000. So the price of Bitcoin had to go to $146,000 to match the total private sector investment in gold via exchange traded funds or bars and coins. Like that's how different it is. Uh, also check out this clip that I found on the Wall Street Journal, actually the same video that talked about the market cap, not just in relation to gold, but also of Apple stock. The total value of Bitcoin in circulation right now is around $420 billion. The value of Apple stock, just Apple, is about $2 trillion. The value of the financial market for gold is north of $12 trillion. So Bitcoin is still very small. It doesn't take a lot of people to come in and push the value up. The, the smallness of the market contributes to these sort of explosive price moves that we've seen. And because the cryptocurrency is decentralized, there is no insurance backing it. There are no backstops to it. It could go down to zero tomorrow and there would be nothing. So overall, that is a lot of information on Bitcoin and the valuation of Bitcoin. But at the end of the day, chances are you just want the answer to one question. Jeff, do I need to invest into Bitcoin? Do I need to buy it now? And the answer is it depends. It really just depends. Bitcoin is a highly 
speculative investment. This thing is all over the place. I mean, we've seen it go from 34,000 down to 30,000 just in a day or two. We've seen it go from 7,000 down to 30. There is nothing saying that it can't go back down that low. So if you're going to invest any money into it, we definitely don't want to invest all of our life savings. We don't want to invest anything that we can't afford. Otherwise, we do run that risk. There are no guarantees with Bitcoin. There is no FDIC insurance. There is no SIPC insurance. There is no insurance period on this thing. So the whole blockchain market, the whole Bitcoin market, it could disappear tomorrow and any money that you invested would be gone. Now, that being said, there are tons of people investing money into this. I think the more that we see the institutional investors, we see big investors, we see average investors putting their money in, they're definitely onto something. And the way the technology is going, the days of writing checks, the days of going to the ATM, especially in this type of condition of a global global pandemic where we are confined to our homes, we can't go out in public, anything that we do online just seems like it's a more logical option. And uh, what I didn't touch upon earlier is talking about the inability, supposedly, to counterfeit Bitcoin as opposed to counterfeiting dollars and other transactions. Now, I'm sure there are so many amazing hackers out there that they can find a way to do it. But I mean, that's one of the supposed safety nets that cryptocurrency, that blockchain offers as opposed to traditional currency. As for me, I do plan to buy more Bitcoin. I'm not really sure what I'm waiting on. I'm telling myself I'm waiting on another dip. I don't know what that is. I actually missed a dip. I think it was about a month or so ago, but don't do what I'm doing. Just. Don't do what I'm doing. Do what works for you. If you think that Bitcoin is here to stay, then it shouldn't matter when you buy it. That's why I tell about people that buy stocks. Like if you think that Tesla is gonna be here for the next 100 years, then who cares if it's $500 a share or 650 bucks a share? It's about, do you believe in the product? Do you believe in the service? If so, there is not a bad time to buy it. All right, y'all, hope you enjoyed this video. If you own any Bitcoin, if you believe in Bitcoin, or if you don't, let me know in the comments below. This is Jeff Rose reminding you that it's your money, it's your life, and only you can make it awesome. Until next time.